Good morning, VIC family. What a great joy it is for me to be with you here this beautiful Sunday morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are exceedingly glad in it. I'm so thankful to Pastor Omar for the opportunity to lead us in our pre-service prayer today. But before I do that, I wanna say a big warm welcome to everyone that is worshiping with us today. I want to especially say an even bigger welcome to anyone that is worshiping with us for the very first time. Welcome, we are so glad that you're here and we really look forward to getting to know you a little bit more. Before we go into our pre-service prayer, I just wanted to share a scripture that has really touched my heart in this season. And it's from the book of Colossians, chapter one, verse nine to 11. I'm gonna start by reading each verse and just sharing what the Lord has put on my heart regarding the scriptures. Verse nine says, for this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all wisdom and understanding that the spirit gives. For many of us over the last six months or so, we have all been experiencing unprecedented times and I'm sure a lot of changes and transformation in the physical, in our lives, as well as in our hearts. This did not take the Lord by surprise He's fully in control and he allowed for this to happen for a particular reason. And for me, as things have been opening up a little bit more, it has been my heart's desire to understand, Lord, what have you purposed for me to do in this season? How do I walk in the spirit more this season? And it's amazing here in the scripture that Apostle Paul is praying that the people in Colossae would be filled with the knowledge of God's will and then says that that wisdom and understanding comes through the Holy Spirit. So it's no coincidence that we have been going through a season of, season of just growing in knowledge and experience of the Holy Spirit. Verse 10 says, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience. You see, for so many of us, we have gone through different experiences in this season. Some people have gone through career changes, job losses. Some people are struggling in their homes and their marriages with, their, with relationships. But it is most important that in the season, that regardless of what we are experiencing, that we seek to know the Lord's will through the Holy Spirit who reveals it to us. Because once we know the Lord's will, then we are able to then live a life that is worthy of the Lord and we're able to please him. And then he also promises us here that he will give us patience and endurance even to to go through the seasons that we are going through. And the amazing thing about this all is that through whatever we're going through, the Bible promises us that we are being transformed from glory to glory into the image of Jesus Christ. And as I read that, it made me truly understand how, why Apostle Paul was so fervently praying for all the churches and every single one of the books that he wrote, he, he demonstrated and talked about how he was praying for them. Desiring to pray for others is becoming like Jesus. That is what the Lord did. If you look at the book of John 16 and 17, you get a glimpse of some of the prayers that, the, that Jesus prayed for his disciples and prayed for the church while he was here in body on earth. So I just want to encourage us today that as we gather around to pray with our families, that we do two things. That one, we would pray for the Lord to reveal his will for us in this season, for the next three months of the year. 
let us go to the Lord and ask him to reveal his will for us. And I can promise you that as we seek him, he never disappoints us. The second thing that I'd like to encourage us to do is as a family, pick maybe one or two other families that you might know in our church, in your community, maybe extended family members, and just pray for them. Praying and interceding for other people is evidence that we are being transformed into the nature of Jesus Christ. So why don't we just do that? I'm gonna say a quick prayer before we go into our pre-service prayer time. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for this time that we get to share together. What a blessing it has been that we've been able to gather over the last six months or so. And what a blessing it is that we can look forward to gathering again in you and gathering together as a family. Lord, I ask that you will go into every home and touch every heart this morning, that you will give us a new revelation of you, that you will reveal your love to us in a new way. I cover the service and everybody that is participating in the service with the blood of Jesus. And I just ask, Lord, that you will be glorified today in our hearts, in our homes, in our minds, that you will be lifted high. In Jesus' name, amen. So please gather your family around and just say a quick word of prayer. And please remember to pray for somebody else. God bless you.
Good morning, Victory International Church. Welcome one more Sunday to our family. We are here to glorify God's name. Today is a very special Sunday because God is in us, in our hearts, in our midst. We are gathered together in His presence. Today, we will also have a Holy Communion in the last part of the service. I want to remind you just Prepare the elements. Prepare, take a piece of bread, a cup of juice. We will declare that He lives forever. The same way in the Exodus with Moses, with the Israelites, they were also glorifying, exalting God's name. Let me read with you Exodus 15. Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The Lord is my strength in my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. Who among the gods is like you, Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? No one, only you. This is our God. For the reason we glorify His name, He saved us, He rescued us. We were lost, walking in the world without hope. But He gave His Son to save us, to rescue us. And we are here to declare that our life belongs to Jesus Christ. So many good things is happening in Singapore. God is healing his land. All this month of October, we will start a very strong season of preparation to in-person service very soon. The first week of November, we are going to come back to fellowship together to see again face to face. Until this happens, we will go through this process. We will seek God's presence more and more. All this time we started to see God's presence, uh, seeking His face, sharing about the Holy Spirit, letting Him to change our mind, to renew our way to worship Him. Many things started to happen already in our church. God is going to do even more. What we need to do, we just need to let Him to do what He wants in our lives. Let me tell you one more thing. We don't know about tomorrow. What about today, when we are alive? Let's do our best to God. Let's worship God as never before. Do you know why? Because He is going to talk to us. I strongly believe if you are ready, He will speak to you. He will speak to you. He will tell you how great is His love. He will reveal to us the secret thing that the Holy Spirit has here already with the intimacy with the Father. Let me declare today the same like the Moses was telling. Let's glorify. Let's exalt him. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The Lord is my strength, is my defense. He has become my salvation. Let's worship God as never before. Good morning, BIC. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it.
What a beautiful moment of worship. We are in fact into a time of turning point for VIC. The government has announced from 3rd October onwards that churches can conduct services for up to 100 people. This turning point signifies one season ends and another begins. For soon we'll be starting physical service and soon we can meet face to face. Yet I see this, not just a physical turning point for you and I. It's not just about moving from virtual church service towards a physical service, but a spiritual turning point for each of us as we walk through the closing of a season into a new spiritual season. I saw the Lord for what to share for such a turning point like this time. What are God's promises for us in this new season? How does God want us to be prepared and be ready? What is our mission for the coming season? And the Holy Spirit put in my heart four promises for this coming new season. And the words come from 2 Kings chapter 25, verse 27 to 30. Beginning with verse 27, In the 37th year of the exile, of Jehoiakim, king of Judah. In the year Aumadu became king of Babylon. He released Jehoiakim from prison. He did this on the 27th day of the 12th month. Verse 28 says, He, the king, spoke kindly to Jehoiakim and gave him a seat of honor higher than those of the other kings who were with him in Babylon. Verse 29, so Jehoiakim put aside his prison clothes and for the rest of his life ate regularly at the king's table. And lastly, verse 30, day by day, the king gave Jehoiakim a regular allowance as long as he lived. Church, bow your head with me as we open in a word of prayer. Spirit of the living God, may you visit each of our home as we open our hearts to receive your word. Pour upon us open heaven blessing for this new season. Your word says that those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Grant us new strength and anointing to step without fear into this new season. Empower us through your words to declare your goodness your power and your grace. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. The title of my today's message is Seat of Honor at the King's Table. Let's briefly recall what we read. It's the time of exile and it's 37 years into this exile, which means Jehoiakim has been in prison for 37 years. In exile, God's people have been cut off from many normal ways of life. But on this day, in 2 Kings 25, there is a turning point. Something new is about to happen because the scripture says that the king releases Jehoiakim from prison, removes his prison garment and gives him seat of honor at the table of the king. For 37 years, Jehoiakim was in prison. We can imagine he has almost lost all hope to be released. Just like us, when government announced circuit breaker in April, we have never thought it would be extended for such a long period. We almost could not see when we can be totally released from all these restrictions. When we can be free to enter and come out of a building without contact tracing. So just like Jehoiakim, where he almost lost all hope of being released, yet on that day of turning point, the king speaks to Jehoiakim, release, and he's free to go wherever he pleases. In fact, church, Jehoiakim represents you and I today. For in so many ways, 
His experiences of exile is similar to our experiences now. As we find ourselves, like Jehoiakim, cut off from all normal ways of life we know so well, so just as in that exile, the Holy Spirit moves Jehoiakim into a new day of transition, a turning point. We too, church, are moving from one season into another. So there are four promises God gave us for this time of transition towards a new season. Turn with me to verse 27. In the 37th year of the exile of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, in the year Ahumadu became king of Babylon, he released Jehoiakim from prison. The first word is released from prison. Church, as we look at verse 27, the first word the Lord has for us today is release. Spirit of God wants to release us from imprisoning wars. Just as the king of Babylon released Jehoiakim from prison, the king of heaven and earth declared to you and I, release. In our time of exile, we have experienced economic shutdown, social distancing, and financial limitations. We have been in exile, and we are still not out of exile. The Spirit of God is approaching and proclaiming to us today, release from your prison walls. These prison walls may be the walls of your home, or they may be boundaries you have long limited yourself, prison walls you have built up. Because of your disbelief that God has blessed you, in times like this, prison walls built up due to pride, due to unforgiveness or discouragement, or prison walls due to the boundary you have set yourself because of the fear within you. In this time of exile, Christ our King is proclaiming release. Christ our King is declaring the Spirit of the Lord is on you and I because the Lord has anointed us to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent you and I to buy up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. Church, the Holy Spirit is declaring release. The Spirit of Christ is declaring to us a time of deliverance and the time of restoration, of forgiveness, of release and empowerment. Now is the time the Spirit of Lord proclaims healing to those kept to, who held captive by guilt, shame, sicknesses or diseases. Last week, we heard amazing testimony of Joe and Doin, brother-in-law, and we have been hearing about a healing miracle from Marcus family too. In fact, from my connect group, any who has had stroke since two years ago, for just recently, her face, her palm was able to open for almost two years. Her palm was closed. Her face was uh, uh, for closed for a long time and she's able to open her palm. And now is the time as God brings release to our life. We will see more signs and wonders as God, our healers, touches those who are sick as He casts out demons from those oppressed. Now is the time that God will anoint our life and send us forth to proclaim freedom to those that are in bondage, in sicknesses and in darkness. We have to start believing these promises in our life and receive God's anointing and be ready to act. For certain patterns of life will not continue. So open ourselves to new ways of doing things. Release from our old ways, from our old thoughts. Receive new vision as we stand up in faith. So in this time of exile, know this. The word of God for us today is, Release from your prison. Be released from your limitation. Release from your fear. Release from your bondage. So the first promise for you and I is release from your prison. Let's move on to the second promises. After the king of Babylon releases Jehoiakim from prison, we read in verse 28, 
The king spoke kindly to Jehoiakim and gave him a seat of honor higher than those of the other kings who were with him in Babylon. Therefore, the second word of promise is, take up your seat of honor. Here we see Jehoiakim declared a criminal, struck off from all status, a man in prison. Yet, the king spoke kindly to Jehoiakim and gave him a seat of honor higher than all other kings in Babylon. Church, this is grace. This is divine favor that the Lord promises us. Some things we don't deserve. Some things we receive not from what we do or what we can do, but from a God who loves us as who we are. A seat of honor is reserved for someone whom we value. And today the word of God calls us to come and take up the seat of honor. God value us and He has put in us a calling. Therefore, this seat of honor, He has elected us. God has raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. That this is what God declares to us in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. That to all the world needing miracles from heaven, He may show the incomparable riches of His grace. Today, the Spirit of God is speaking. Be released from prison and take up your seat of honor. This is the second promise He has for us. God raises us up and seats us with Him in order that in this new season, He show us His incomparable riches of His grace to us and not only to us, but through us to the world we are to reach out. So on this day, the turning point of Jehoiakim's life, we look at verse 29, it says, Today, Jehoiakim put aside his prison garment. Therefore, the third word to us is, remove your prison garments. When God brings us into a new season, He says, put on new garment. For each garment change symbolizes a new season of our life, a road shift in our life, a call for a change of garments. During lockdown, I have the time to pack my daughter's old clothing. When I remove her toddler garments and put aside the clothes she bought in nursery and kindergarten because she moves, she's in primary one, I realize how she has moved on in very season of her life. And each new season, she has outgrown her old garments and has to put on new sets of clothing. In the natural world, we change garment with the change of seasons. For those who come from countries of four seasons, you know very well you cannot wear the same kind of clothes for all seasons. So now comes the hour for you and I to take off winter clothing that we may wear new clothing for new season. So we are to step into the new season. God is calling us. It's vital. We remove the prison clothes, remove those old garments of the past. We are in a time of spiritual shift in this season. This requires an action from us. Just like Jehoiakim, he removed his prison clothes. We need to be ready to take off those prison garments in order to enter into a new realm of experience to receive another realm of blessings. Are you ready and willing to take off those prison garments? For if you keep wearing garments of bitterness, unforgiveness and guilt, you remain a prisoner. This will close any opportunities for you to move forward. Church, there is an enemy out there who wants to keep us as prisoners forever. And his master's ways of stealing was rightfully yours. He enjoys seeing us wearing prison garments so that we stop ourselves from receiving the blessing, the healings, and the victories. 
Yet the promises that God has for us today is He has for everyone in this church new clothes, garments of rulership, garments of for kings and queens, garments of royalty. So we have to look at ourselves and ask ourselves, what prison clothes I need to remove? Brothers and sisters, let us replace garments of depression with new garments of vision, garments of sorrow and loneliness with new garments of victory, garments of regrets, shame, discouragement, with new garments of hope, joy and praise. For the promise of God He has for us is in Isaiah 61 verse 3, to bestow on us a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and instead of a spirit of despair, a garment of praise. So church, let's remove our prison garments and put on garments of praise. Now, I share with you three promises from the Lord. The first is release from prison. And second is take up seats of honour. The third is remove your prison garments and put on garments of praise. The final word we see in verse 23. So Jehokim put aside his prison clothes and for the rest of his life ate regularly at the king's table. This is the climax for all Christians. We change our garments to enter the dining hall with the king. Therefore, the fourth, fourth word God has for you and I is, Come, eat at the king's table. As we examine ourselves, look at the garments you are wearing, because we can't wear prison clothes to the king's table. However, as children of God, we have the right to wear garments of royalty. I remember when in 2005, I was invited to receive an award from the President of Singapore. During, during that time was President Naden. For that dinner event, I don't just wear any clothing, I put on my very best clothing. And today, the King of Kings is inviting us to eat at the King's table. In that dinner event with President Naden, I was seated far from him. Yet today, the King of Kings invites you and I to the King's table. At the table, he gives us the best seat, the seat of honour, the seat next to Christ the King to partake together with him. As I conclude, my question is, are you ready to enter the dining hall with the King of Kings? For this new season, God is saying, Come eat at the king's table. Come and receive from him. Release that from prison. Replace prison clothes with garments of praise and take out seats of honour at the table of the king. Spirit of God is calling us to receive the bread of life, the fountain of the living waters. And this is so crucial before we step into a new season as we need the spiritual nourishment to empower us for a coming season of favour, to receive open heaven blessing for each one of us. So again, hear the word of the Lord that says, as the Spirit of Christ is speaking to you and I, release from prison, remove our prison garments and put on garments of praise, take up the seat of honour and eat at the king's table. And just like Jehoiakim, where the Bible says in verse 29, who from then on, all the days of his life, regularly had his meals in the king's presence. So from this day on, we like Jehoiakim, receive from the Lord what Psalms 23 verse 6 says, Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow you all the days of your life as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm ending with this, brothers and sisters. We are nourished to be a blessing. The Lord feed us 
so that we may feed those who are physically and spiritually hungry. He gave us drink that we may bring to the thirsty the fountain of living waters. Therefore, from here, as God releases us from our limitations, from our prison, may we go forth, take off our prison garments and put on garments of praise. Go forth knowing our place of honour at the King's table and confidence that God's goodness and love will follow us all the days of our life. Today, as you have been informed, we come to the table of Holy Communion. I encourage that we come to the altar of encountering with God. As we partake the Holy Communion, He empower us with His grace for this new season. As we partake the Lord's Supper, He anoint us to share good news with the broken-hearted, to minister freedom to the captives, to bring light to those in darkness, and proclaim healing to those in sickness and those who are hurting. Dear Church, let's come to the altar of encountering God through our worship and also thereafter the partaking of the Lord's Supper. Let's worship our God. Your song. 
how important it is to hear from God. How important it is to walk in His presence. He is great. He is power. He is our Father. He loves us. God loves us. He is with us. Did you hear His voice today? Did you feel His presence? Such amazing, powerful message. It's a prophetic word that God released to us as a VIC, as a family, as a church. It's an important season that what we are living now. Let's continue seeking God's presence. Some four points that Payne was sharing today when she talked about seat of honor at the king's table. Let's review the four points released from prison, from anything that is that allow us to, to be free. God is calling us to be free in Him, in His presence. Take up your seat of honor. This is our place. We have a place of privilege together with God. At the same time, remove your prison garments and put on your new garments of praise. Can eat at the king's table. God is inviting us all the time to sit together with Him. To do this correctly, we need to understand that we need Jesus in our lives. We need Jesus. God gave His Son to die for us, to rescue us, to save us. Let me tell you, if you didn't receive Jesus in your heart yet, if you didn't confess that Jesus is your Lord and your Savior, that you want to live for Him alone, today you have this privilege. If you didn't receive Christ until now, what about let's do today? Let's do it today. If you are ready, can you repeat with me this powerful prayer? that will express that we recognize that we need Christ. Can we say together, Jesus, today I hear your word. I realize that I need you. I was walking without you. But today I confess I am a sinner. That without you, I cannot be saved. I need you, Jesus. I don't want to die forever. I want to live forever in your presence. I confess my sins today. Can Jesus change my heart? Fill me with your presence, with your love, with your life. I declare today that you are my Lord, that you are my Savior. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you pray this, if this prayer really means in your heart, let me tell you, Christ is in you. You are experiencing now a new beginning. A born again. For the rest of your life, you can live in His presence. Even when we die, after that, we will continue living. Because our body can stay here when we die. But our soul, our spirit, we glorify His name forever. Praise the Lord. If you confess your sins for the first time, you declare Jesus as your Lord today for the first time, tell somebody, call us, give us a message. We want to celebrate with you. Today also we have a very important moment. We are going to have a Holy Communion. Let me invite Pen. Pen, please join me in this important, important moment. Thank you for the message that you shared today. Such a powerful message that we receive from God. It's a prophetic message for our VIC family. Today we are going to celebrate together the Holy Communion. This is the place that God is calling us. Come eat at the King's table. 
after so many months, today we have the privilege to celebrate together. If you are ready at home, let's celebrate together. The Bible say, let me read in the first of Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. Jesus said, the uh, Apostle Paul said, for I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given things, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 25, in the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Verse 26, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. The last verse, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. Let's take this time to examine ourselves. If something is not aligned with God's word, with God's principles, it's time to confess. Let's take a few minutes, a few moments. We are going to share the two elements, the cup of wine and the piece of bread. Just reminded in the cross, something special happened. Jesus died on the cross for us. He shed his blood to wash our sins, to be safe, for this we glorify God. But in the same sacrifice, in his body, he took all our infirmities, our sickness, our pains, our illness. He took it already. For all of us, we can live abundant life. This is what we are going to celebrate today. The Bible says, by his stripes, we are healed. And by his shed, by his, he shed his blood, we are safe. Let's prepare this moment for the Holy Communion. I will invite Pain to pray for the bread who represents the body of Christ. Maybe we can we can take the element. This piece of bread represents the body of Christ. His body was broken so that we can experience fullness and wholeness in health. And right now, as we are partaking, partaking this bread, I would like to pray for those who are sick in their body. I'd like to invite them to put their hands over the areas that they need healing from God and believe in faith that God can heal and heal them of the pain and the areas that is in need of God's touch. Let's close our eyes in prayer. Father, we thank you for this body that has been broken for us as we be able to enjoy this fullness and wholeness of health. We thank you that it is by your stripe and when you die on the cross that healing is released to us. 
Father, we pray, God, for that wherever areas of pains or wherever areas in our body that needs your touch, may you touch right now. By faith, we receive this healing. Father, we thank you for this bread of life that can give us nourishment in our body, in our soul, and Lord, in our spirit. Father, we pray, God, that as we partake this bread, may you continue to anoint us as we go forth to proclaim healing to those who are sick, to those who are hurting and in pain. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's take the bread. The verse 25 says, In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in the remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim, the Lord's death until he comes. When we talk about the piece of bread, we declare that by his strength we are healed. And now, when we take the cup of wine, we declare that by his blood, he was shed in the cross, he washed our sins, for you and me, we can be safe. We can be free from sin. If we can live a holy life in His best. Let's pray. Jesus, we are here declaring that you are our Lord, that you are our Savior. We express our gratitude to you for the blood of Christ which washes away our sins. We rejoice because the power of sin in our life has been broken, that sin has no more power in us. We are ready to live abundant life because your grace, because your mercy. Do this real in our life. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let's partake the blood of Jesus. And let's rejoice in his presence. Let's rejoice because he rose up from the dead. He's alive. He will come back again. He invites us to sit with him in his presence, to enjoy the eternity, worshiping every day, declaring how great is our God in our life. We glorify it. We want to see our families. Our Bible say that if you believe in Christ, if you confess his name, if you believe in him, you will be saved, but also you and all your family. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Thank you for your body. In you, we are healed. In you, we are safe. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Peg. Before we finish, let me just share with you some announcement. I told you, all this month of October, we start already a new season of preparation for what is coming. Soon we will have a physical service again. Be ready for greater things. All this month, we will have a different connect groups, a physical connect groups, physical moments of prayers. We will have a time of prayer and fasting before our service. We will send the details soon. 
But the most important, prepare your heart for what God is going to do. Every week we have different Connect groups. On Fridays, Tuesday we have a men's group, Wednesday we have a ladies' group, Thursday we have a prayer time together. Friday we also have a young adult. Beside this, we have 3 p.m. our children ministry. Every Sunday, such an amazing moment. It's powerful. Our kids enjoy this presence, this moment. We also have our tithes and offerings. We are doing online. We will continue doing all this month online. It's many ways that we are able to worship our God. Let me tell you before we close, God is going to do greater things in you, in your life, in your family. But you need to open your heart to say, yes, I want it. Let me pray for you if we finish today. Jesus, thank you for this service today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your worship. Thank you for who you are. We want to declare that we are here because of your mercy, because of your grace, because of your, your love. Help us to walk in the supernatural dimension of faith, to move in all the dimensions, to live for you alone. Bless every single person in our family, in VIC, who is attending this service, that we can hear your voice. In all this week, we can walk under your blessings. Bless every desire in our hearts. Help our desires to align according to your word and your purpose and your principle. It's the most important that every day we can shine your light. Bless us, every one of us, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Victory International Church, have a blessed week in God's presence.
Sin rights be Jesus, you're 